high standard eight candidates. I welcome you all to our science uh, lesson. Pupils, today we are going to have a look on uh, food and nutrition. Still in food and nutrition, we are going to talk about uh, special groups. Pupils, when we talk about special groups, this, these are people with the special nutritional requirements. Candidates, example of special groups are infants, lactating mothers. When we talk about uh, lactating mothers, these are uh, mothers who are, uh, we call them nursing mothers. We have expectant mothers. We have uh, invalids. Invalids, we call them also the sick. We have the convalescents. The convalescents also, we call them people recovering from illness. We have HIV and uh, AIDS patients. We have those people who are diabetic. We have manual workers, those people who use more calories to do work. We have the elderly. These are the people who are aged. They have more years. And uh, of course, we have the rest special people whom we call vegetarian. Candidates, vegetarian, they feed only on uh, veg uh, vegetables. The classification of special groups depends on age and the health of the person. Number one, we are going to talk about nutritional needs of an expectant mother. Nutritional needs of an expectant mother. Expectant mother candidates, are women who are pregnant. Expectant mothers need a balanced diet. They need to eat food rich in carbohydrates, for energy also known as energy giving foods, proteins also known as body building foods, vitamins also known as protective foods, and lastly, they need mineral salts. We want to talk each of the food group and what it gives to the expectant matter. Carbohydrates, they are required to provide the body with energy. Sources of carbohydrates are as follows. We have bread, we have ugali, we have potatoes, we have chapatis, we have biscuits, we have rice, we have green bananas, we have maize, we have millet, we have sugarcane, we have yams, we have cassafas, we have arrowroots, we have honey, and lastly, we have zim sim. The second type of food is proteins. Proteins, they are required for proper growth and development of the baby. Sources of protein are as follows. Fish, beans, sardines, milk, eggs, green grams, njahi, beef, chicken, groundnuts, proteins are also required for milk formation because the mother is going to breastfeed the baby. Next is calcium. Candidates, 
an expectant mother requires calcium for the development of strong bones of of the foetus the foetus this is the baby which is in the stomach the baby in the stomach is referred to us as the foetus or fetus sources of sources of calcium are milk uh, milk cheese fish bone soup millet and the matumbo candidates matumbo are the intestines they also need iron iron is useful in formation of hemoglobin hemoglobin is a, a pigment in red blood cells enough iron enhances enough blood for the mother and the fetus sources of iron are as follows we have liver kidney meat eggs kales also known as sukuma wiki spinach green leafy vegetables and the beans candidates we now move to vitamin vitamins are required to provide protection against the diseases so expectant mothers should eat adequate fruits and the vegetables these foods also help to prevent constipation candidates also they need what we call lavages lavages another name for lavage is uh, viber fruits and the vegetables are important sources of lavages lavages have no nutritive value but assist in digestion when we talked about the digestive system digestion is the removal of waste products from the body so if you take they take enough foods rich in ravage or fiber it enables them to get rid of waste product from the body that is digestion they need vitamin d for what candidates vitamin d is required for strong bones of the developing fetus sources of vitamin d are eggs milk cheese and the margarine i want to note this an expectant mother should avoid taking soda tea coffee smoking and taking alcohol drugs may affect the fetus negatively expectant mother also they need fats and the oils they provide energy large quantities should be avoided because it leads to heartburn nausea and the indigestion indigestion is also referred to as as constipation sources of fats and the oils candidates there is a difference between fats and oils fats are in solid form and the oils are in liquid form 
Sources of fats from animals are as follows. We have butter, bacon, cod, liver, oil from fish. We have ghee, we have cheese. Fats and oils from plants are coconuts, groundnuts, cashew nuts, cooking fat, salads like corn, oil, and the margarine. Next we move to next we move to nutrition, nutritional requirements for a lactating matter. Nutritional requirements for a lactating mother. A lactating mother is a breastfeeding mother. A breastfeeding mother needs a balanced diet. In the balanced diet for lactating matters, the following should be given with special attention. One, proteins required to, re to repair and the production of adequate milk. Two, carbohydrates provide energy to the lactating mother. Three, phosphorus, calcium, and the magnesium needed for strong bones and the teeth of the baby. Four, enough fluids like water for maximum production of milk, breast milk. Next is nutritional requirements for infants, nutrition for infants. Candidates, infants are newborn babies below the age of two years. Infants are exclusively fed on milk for four to six months before winning. What is winning? Winning is the, is the introduction of solid foods. Afterwards, the infant feeds on pressed milk with other same solid food introduced gradually. Examples of such foods are mashed bananas or mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes and the mashed bananas is the best to start winning. We have above said winning is the introduction of solid foods to a baby at the age of six months. Breast milk. Breast milk is a fluid produced by the mammary glands of the mother. The first milk from the mother soon after giving birth is known as colostrum. Colostrum is thick, yellowish in color. Colostrum is thick, yellowish in color. The main function of colostrum is to boost the baby's immunity, that is to make the body able to fight against diseases. That is body defense system. Candidates, what are the advantages of pressed milk? Everything with advantage as the disadvantage. So let us start with the advantages. One, it is at the right temperature. Two, 
it provides immunity. Three, it is a balanced diet. Four, it bonds the relationship between the mother and the baby. Five, it is convenient. Six, it is germ free. Seven, it improves the mental development of the baby. Lastly, pressed milk is easily digested. Now we move candidates to the disadvantages of breast feeding or breast milk. Breast milk one may not be available in case the matter passes on. Two, it curtails the movement of the mother since she has to be present to provide the baby with pressed milk. Advantages of bottle feeding, that's cup. The, the mother has time to do other activities. It is easy to leave the baby under the care of a house help. Disadvantages of bottle feeding or cup, it is not convenient. The baby may be allergic to cow's milk. It does not bond the relationship between the mother and the child. Bottle food may not be balanced. Another disadvantage is may cause problems of digestion. Bottles may easily contaminated, so they should therefore be handled well to avoid food poisoning. Nibbles should be washed in boiled water. Candidates, now we move to nutritional needs of a people infected with HIV and the AIDS. Nutritional needs of people infected with HIV and AIDS, this group should be should fed on a balanced diet constituting of proteins, carbohydrates, vitamins, fiber, and the plenty of fluids and the water. How to help them regain appetite? How do you help people infected with HIV AIDS to regain appetite, to have that ability of eating? One, use chilies and vinegar. Two, use of ginger and curry dye. Kol dye is in the near. Exercise before meal time. They can jog on the spot, they stretch so that you increase the appetite of eating. Four, drink at least eight glasses of water to help remove poisons from the body. What are the uses of ginger? Ginger it is commonly known as tangawizi. Ginger helps in digestion. It increases the appetite. It controls fungi and the bacteria. It improves the flavor of the food. When we talk about the flavor, this is the best. How to help them have digestion? How can you help people living with HIV AIDS to have good digestion? They must only eat when they are hungry. They must eat wholesome food, 
avoid refined foods like brown bread, brown chapati, and wholesome wheat. Provide fruits and vegetables. They must not eat fast to help in mixing of food with saliva. Include pineapple and the popo. This helps in digestion. Eat chincha, kolidai, that is indania, and the cloves, as well as cinnamon. How to help? How to help? the large intestine to deal with food. These are people infected with HIV. Feed them on diet rich in fiber. Examples of these foods are whole meal, whole wheat, brown bread, millet, cabbages, cow peas, leaves, carrots, garlic, green banana, palms, rinds of citrus fruit, green banana, Mangoes, popos, pumpkins, passion fruits, ripe bananas, pears, apples, and the lemons. Give them fermented milk. This improves digestion. Give coconut oil or milk. Note that cabbages should be given when raw or fermented cabbage. Juicy. Raw garlic stops increasing of HIV and kills other chumps. I repeat, raw and cooked garlic commonly known as kitungu saumu, stops increasing of HIV and kills other germs. How to choose? How to choose foods that make their excretory system work well? Candidates? Have fresh foods, salads, and the fruits. Feed on less meat and more plant protein. Take small quantities of meals regularly. Avoid alcohol or beer. And not Fried foods are not part of nutritional requirements for any of the special needs. I repeat, fried foods are not part of nutritional requirements for any of the special groups. Now candidates, we move to food poisoning. Food poisoning is an illness caused by eating contaminated foods. This illness mainly attack the stomach, but could also spread to other parts of the body. Causes of food poisoning. Things that cause food poisoning are called food 
contaminants or food poisoning agents. There are two main causes of food poisoning. Causes of food poisoning. This, these are chemicals and microorganisms. Chemicals that could cause food poisoning at home are fertilizers, kerosene, pesticides, detergents, insecticides, some cosmetics, herbicides, antiseptics, and bleaching agents. The second one is uh, chemicals. The second one is microorganisms. Microorganisms that may cause food poisoning are bacteria and fungi. Microorganisms are usually small, tiny, living things. This occurs when the food is not properly stored. I want you to note the following. When people store chemicals and the food together, the chemicals can accidentally mix with food and they cause food poisoning. Two, chemicals should therefore not be stored near foods. When people apply chemicals and eat food without washing their hands, it can cause food poisoning. Some, some naturally existing chemicals are found in maize, stored in damp places. Some parts of cassava or potatoes and the beans. Moldy foods such as maize, bluish in color, produce a chemical called aflatoxin. Aflatoxin which causes food poisoning and it can lead to death. Beans contain chemicals that may cause stomachache. Plotting, that is much gases in the stomach, and the vomiting due to the chemical that causes food poisoning in beans. They should be soaked overnight, and the water used for soaking boiled away before cooking. This prevents food poisoning. Avoid eating green or sprouting parts of potatoes because they contain poisonous substances. Protein foods, poorly stored, can go bad quickly due to contamination by microorganisms. So avoid Avoid eating moldy fruits. They contain dangerous fungi. What are the symptoms of food poisoning? One is persistent vomiting. Two, violent diarrhea. Three, FIFA. Four, body weakness. Five, dizziness. Six, constipation. And then lastly, but not least, severe stomachache and abdominal pain. Candidates, we move to ways of preventing food poisoning. How can you prevent somebody or one from food poisoning. 
to avoid food poisoning, hygienic food handling practices must be observed. Such a practices include number one, store food properly. All stored foods should be covered to prevent contamination. Two, clean foodstuffs from kiosks, markets, and food sellers. Three, buying flesh, fruits, and vegetables by the fruits in season. Four, do not buy expired foods. Always check the expiry dates. Do not buy foodstuffs that do not indicate the expiry or whose date has expired. Five, do not buy foods. Do not buy damaged foods that are infested with pests such as weevils or those that are moldy. Six, food stores and the cupboards should have adequate space and a mesh that allows air circulation. They should also be protected against dust, insects, and the rotins. Seven, always store food under the right conditions, such as dry and the cool places. This prevents food from going bad. Eight, fruits and the vegetables that are eaten raw should be washed thoroughly before serving. Nine, wastes from the kitchen should be disposed of properly away from foods. Nine, food remains should be reheated properly under high temperatures before being served. Frozen foods should be allowed to fully boil before use. 10, food leftovers should be cooled completely before storage. 11, medicines, detergents, fuels, and the other household chemicals should not be stored near foods. Lastly, but not least, fruits and the vegetables that are eaten raw should be washed thoroughly before serving. Candidates, up to that point, we have come to the end of our today's lesson. I wish you a good day until we meet next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.